Hello and welcome to the 98th episode by Pale Blue Thoughts. Today we will be discussing two effects created by the moon. First look at a video that I made two days ago from my own balcony. Please pardon the video quality as this has been captured through a mobile phone and that too late at night with no special lighting. In this video you can see the moon moving across the clouds. Well, in reality it is the cloud that is moving and not the moon. But that is not the effect that I am referring to. Look at where the clouds are. They are behind the moon and the moon appears to be in front of the clouds. How is this possible? The moon we know is around 400,000 kilometers away and the clouds are something that we can see beneath us when we are in a flight around 35,000 feet or 10 kilometers high from the ground. So how does the moon appear in front of the clouds? And yet sometimes we see the moon hiding behind the clouds. Now how are both effects possible? We will look at this and one another moon illusion in this video. Come on, let's moon it moon it. The same illusion can also be seen on a cloudy sky and you look at the sun setting in the horizon. But of course, the moon makes a better viewing so I'll stick to it. The explanation is the same for both. So what is the explanation? Your eye is not particularly good at seeing less bright objects when flooded with light from a bright object. Add in the fact that the clouds are very thin so they appear to disappear just as if they went behind the moon. With those inputs through your eyes, your brain creates a situation that makes it appear that the clouds are behind the moon. Simple experiments at home will show you for yourself how something can appear to go behind a very bright object when in reality it is in front of it. You can do this with a light bulb or bright light with a transparent camera film over the top of the light. Now here you can see that the light is not shining and the film appears over the light bulb. As soon as the light gets turned on the film in front disappears due to the brightness and the film outside the area illuminated by the light appears to be behind the light. You can see that it looks like the film isn't overlapping the light but it only appears that way because the light is so bright that it passes through the film entirely to a camera or to our eyes. In reality the film is absolutely over the top of the light. Now when more film is placed on top of the first film the film again appears to be in front of the light as the film is no longer transparent. Now see this antenna which is in front of the light. It appears to be in front as it is opaque and light cannot shine through it but it can move around it. So the reason why the moon appears in front of clouds is because of the brightness and our own brain unable to perceive things correctly. The sun and the moon are very bright compared to the sky around them. Clouds are not solid objects really. They are made of water droplets and there are many types of clouds with different densities. Extremely thin clouds will allow all of the sun or moon's light through. Other more dense rain clouds for example with more water in them may not allow all the light straight through resulting in the appearance of a cloud passing in front of the sun or moon. Also this effect of clouds passing behind the moon happens when it is a full moon or a near full moon when it is very bright. In the case of a crescent moon, the clouds appear to be in front of the moon as the moon is not so bright then. You can also do the same experiment with a paper, a bit of cello tape and a mobile flashlight in case you want to demonstrate this to your children. So that is one illusion cleared. The second effect is that of the size of the moon. When the moon is high in the sky, it appears a certain size. But when it is in the horizon, it appears bigger, much bigger. The same effect can be seen when you are viewing the moon amidst tall buildings or apartments. So does the moon grow in size as it gets closer to the horizon? Of course no. There are two reasons why this happens and both are related to each other slightly. The first one is that the moon at the horizon is perceived to be at the end of a stretch of a landscape which is receding into the distance, most often accompanied by distant trees, buildings and so forth, all of which indicate that it must be a long way away. A 
a human mind judges the object based on his background this is called a ponzo illusion look at these two yellow lines drawn over a rail track which one is longer the upper line looks longer because we interpret the sides as parallel lines receding into the distance in this context we interpret the upper line as though it were further away so we see it as longer this hypothesis is called the apparent distance hypothesis another alternative view is called the relative size hypothesis this states that the perceived size of an object depends not only on what we see through our eyes but also on the size of objects in its immediate visual environment in the case of the moon objects in the vicinity of the moon in the horizon that is objects like tall buildings tall structures makes the moon appear larger while the moon at the top of the sky is surrounded by large expanses of empty sky that makes it appear smaller the effect is illustrated by the classic ebbinghaus illusion look at the middle circles in these two pictures which one appears bigger in reality both are the same size but the lower circle appears to be bigger now consider the moon the lower central circle surrounded by small circles might represent the moon in the horizon accompanied by objects of smaller visual extent while the upper central circle represents the moon at the zenith surrounded by expanses of sky of larger visual extent although both central circles are actually the same size the lower one looks larger to many people this is the reason why the horizon moon appears bigger to our eyes so that is two explanations for two effects caused by the moon no two effects caused by our brain because it has been designed poorly by evolution i hope you like this video for more videos such as this open youtube and search for pale blue thoughts and you will find hundreds of videos where we have cleared many misconceptions and superstitions since we started one more thing before i close as per the latest stats for this channel subscribers who have clicked on the bell icon and selected all for this channel is only 15.6% and people who have clicked the bell icon and also enabled youtube notifications is less than 12% so if you are our subscriber and you are watching this video till this point this is the right time to click on the bell icon and select all only then will you get notifications when we release new videos there are many more exciting topics coming up as i approach the 100th video so stay tuned until next time keep increasing that scientific temper